Hello, my name is Magic Castelli. I'm Chief Creative Officer at Resolution Games. So we're making Blaston at Resolution, and Blaston plays on a 6.5 square space, roughly. But from the, that game, we knew how much you can do body motions and variations around that, even in a limited space. At the same time, I'm a racket player. I play tennis a lot every week. Um, and one day, I think, my, the connection made between the two, which is you could do a, a tennis-like game in such a limited space if you put walls around, it will work. Uh, in initial reaction, you may think that's too small, it cannot work. And that's why all the tennis games out there are using teleportation to keep the normal court size. The feeling from the Glaston experience was, well, wait a minute, no. Uh, you can have just a, a lot of the feeling from that limited space. When you play a double, we just double the space. Um, because now the two players in both their homes can combine their available space to make a bigger court. That feels very nice. The first thing we invested so long on is getting the physics right. You know, this is, this is the core. You're trying to emulate a feeling of something that is the result of billions of uh, trillions of molecules interacting in four or five milliseconds. When you look slow motion of how a ball compresses on the racket and then leaves the racket in the racket sports, it's so complex. So there was a lot of work in, and of course you cannot simulate that complexity. You have to find the right level of abstraction. So that was the first conquering moment. And it took so many iterations, uh, reading math papers, reading a lot of people's previous work on what is the game of tennis, what is the game of pickleball, and how can you mathematically model it so that you can program it. And once we, once we had the right feeling of impact, that was, that was a big step for the project, even to make it viable. You're being thrown a ball at you, and you have to position yourself to the ball in a way that it's the most natural for your body to, to hit it. And you're always trying to maximize control and swing speed. And so the, the, the resulting history of racket sports and the stance that you adopt in real life translates exactly the same in virtual because it's the same constraints. During the rally, you will not see as much lateral or forward backward running as you have in tennis. The ball comes to you and the, the, the skill is how fast you can position your body so that you have that natural swing position at the, at the hit moment. It felt very natural to make you in, to put you on a glass box for the ball to bounce on. What's interesting is then the height. And the height is several factors. So the lower the height, then maybe you could all the way down to what a hockey rink could feel like, you know, a meter, meter and a half. Uh, and that feels great. The problem, of course, is that it's so easy to kick the ball out of bounds. So the game tries to find a nice compromise between not feeling too boxed in with high walls, but also keeping the ball inbound for everyone so that it's, you, keep, you have long rallies naturally. And in average, uh, there's an av in average, yeah, the, the walls are like two meter, two meter and a half high. The notion of average is because as you get better in the game, we lower the walls <laughs> because you need to have more skills. Uh, and so initially, what I felt after seeing a lot of people start tennis, so start those racket things, is that the fun is not there for the, from the first sessions because too many times the ball just flies away, is out of bounds, and you just pick one, two, and it's over. One, two, and it's over. That's just a frequent thing. So what you want in the beginning is people to have fun very without training just uh, the, the pure fun of hitting the ball back and forth and discovering the magic. So the walls are there to maximize rallies, how easy it is to keep the ball in play. That's the number one use of the wall. Two, they're there to create gameplay variations. If you had no walls, the type of angles you can reach is maybe this, right? But suddenly if you have walls, you can have a ball which is going to be bouncing completely sideways as if the court was much, much wider and you had another player on the side that hit the ball that way. 
And so that's the, that's the other role of the, of the walls. And the third one is that they can help you create spins, radical spins that you cannot achieve just with your racket. So we let you put the racket through the wall, so, and, and so that's fine. It's only the ball that's limited by the wall. So that means it's very easy for you to like almost hit on the wall, you know. You, you cram the ball on the wall. What does create in real world physics and in our game's physics, you can create amazing speeds from this because the compression of the ball on the wall results in the ball rotating after the impact. So we have this special rule called the Ultra Rally. Uh, the final name is not set, but that's, that's the name we use internally. And that's very specific to us, and I say you can only do this because it's a digital game. So, the rule is simple. The value of the point you're playing increases by the number of shots. The longer the rally is, the more points it's worth. What, what, this came from watching hours of tennis games on, on, online and feeling, you know, sometimes the point is incredible. And it's just worth just as much as the next point where the guy just puts it directly as an ace or, or the return is out of bounds. And I felt like there is a missed opportunity for creating uh, excitement from those long rallies. Because now, in, in Racket Club, when you play, the longer the, 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 the longer the point is going on, the more you know it's going to impact the score of the match. So <laughs> the stakes are rising and it's like a, you're, you're even less likely to let go. You're not going to let go because it's been so important. And this creates uh, score turnarounds moments. You know, even if you're leading, let's, you're, the, the game adopts the 11 as the set winning score. But let's say you're 10 to 1, so you're really leading that point. But there is a absolutely amazing rally. It needs to be rather rare, but to, to reach a 9 point would be a super, super long rally. But it can happen. Very rarely it can happen. And so you can turn it around in one point.